Welcome back, Achievers, to your Easy Achievers Game Podcast for the week of May 5th, 2022. I'm one of your hosts, Elijah, sitting with me today digitally, Alex. Salutations. How are you? I am doing I see you I'm brought good. back the Mr. Apple attire. Look, man, all I have <laughs> is black shirts. <laughs> Here, I'll just start doing this. Uh, so I'll tell you a, a funny. V next. I'll tell you a funny story. Mm-hmm. I can ne- never remember Sim jo- Steve Jobs' name because mm-hmm. the first thing that comes into my head is Tim Apple. Now, people would know this is a reference to Donald Trump calling the CEO of Apple Tim Cook, Tim Apple. So for some reason, that's. What I remember when I think of Apple and I try to think of Steve Jobs is I think of Tim Apple. Then I'm like, no, that's not his name. It's Tim Cook. Mm. Then I go, but that's not Steve Jobs. Who is that? And then I go, oh, it is Steve Jobs. So that's why every time I go to say Steve Jobs' name, I'm sitting there for a couple of seconds trying to be like, what was his name? <laughs> Steve Jobs. Because like you and me, Alex, we weren't we were, we we were around when Steve Jobs was alive, of course. Yeah. But we weren't like everyone else where, like, he was, like, he's basically their Elon Musk, I guess, is a good way of saying it. Like, this uh, yeah, crazy yeah. guy that was, like, yeah, pretty very, much. I guess, eccentric is the word you could use. Famously an asshole. Um, but he, you know, he made an iPhone, so we of, all give him a pass. I love one of his, his one, of, one of his reveals that he ever did. He was, um, he was, like, looking at his pocket. He's, like... What's up with this little small pocket right here in the jeans? Will you all ever wonder what that's for? Ah, uh, me too. He starts pulling out an iPod Nano. Well, now you know what it's for. And pull. And that's how he. That's how he revealed the iPod. One of the iPod touches. I don't know if the if he wrote these things, but he was always really good mm. at the showmanship of it. No, yeah, like he not he had a, very yeah. rare. You get the idea guy, but also mm. the guy that can sell your stuff. And Steve yeah. Jobs was the guy. Like he, like when you said that, he always made the joke of uh, when they were showing off. I believe the iPhone three G. Like like when they were originally showing it off, he like made the joke like, "Oh, uh, oh God, I have to watch it again." But he was making the joke like, "Oh, you know, you can't surf the web and things. You know, you have to have all these devices." Well, on our phone, it does all all the same and like it shows like all this all these things that i can do it can call it can oh and we have a calculator oh and by the way uh we can search the web you like all this crazy stuff and he, but he's also making jokes about other people it's really fun yeah. i actually kind of want to watch it after this um just to kind of refresh because it really is it's a good um uh if you're into hosting and just kind of studying the art of it it's a great way uh if you're listening at home and you ever want to host something just watch kind of his mannerisms and the way he's saying things and kind of getting to certain punch lines very quickly it's almost like a hybrid of like comedy with this kind of like i need to sell but also show and i have a bunch of investors i have to also impress it's, it's a very interesting web that's all happening in front of you. it was it's it's always fun to watch again we weren't alive when he was like super proof so i can only watch videos <laughs> anyways this is a video games podcast it's the Easy Achievers Gaming Podcast. We come to you every single Friday on a podcast service of choice or YouTube. Now, I know you're asking yourself, how can I support this podcast? They talk about Steve Jobs. And the guy kind of looks like Steve Jobs when he wears a black shirt because he's got such a thick beard. Well, <laughs> thank you for asking. You can head over to a podcast service of your choice and give us a five-star review, which is absolutely free. Just costs your time. And then if you're on YouTube, well, strap in because there's a lot more you could do. You can. You can like it, you can comment, which is one of the most important things you can do, but also on top of that, you can subscribe to the actual YouTube page. Now, if you subscribe, please hit the notification bell because subscriptions have turned to the way of like the Dodo, where if you subscribe to something, you don't actually see the videos, you really just, you're just kind of in your feed, but no one goes to their feed anymore because you're subscribed to a thousand things because it's a free thing. So now just hit the bell, you'll get notified when we actually post things, and we're all having a good time. Now, if you want to Support us financially. Of course, you can head over to patreon.com slash achievers. You get early access when we can over there. Most of the time, though, you can DM us to get on the show. You can ask us questions. You can comment on how much Alex does look like Steve Jobs. Anything you'd like over on patreon.com slash achievers. Alex, 
Hmm. We have both a rapid fire, semi correction, semi rumor roundup, all in one. But first, we're gonna oh, hit no. rapid fire. But before we do that, Alex, hmm. I start the show every single week with a single question: What have you been playing? Before I get to that, uh, oh. viewers, uh, sorry for timestamps are going to be horribly wrong because I forgot mm. to start timer. So we'll carry on, but and I'll try the, to do this. As but from this point on, it'll be good, though, right? Yeah. So, like, yeah. what the imp- you look at the important stuff, though. Yeah. But um, yeah, I've been playing Neo on PlayStation. Um, I've been still in the in the uh, fields of the FromSoft games. Mm. <clears throat> After I beat Sekiro, and I was like, you know, I was like, I've never beaten Neo, and it's like, it's not from Soft, but it has that same type esque, the Souls like game. Important to know, you, had, you have never played these. No, yeah, I've never played the Neo games, and I'm actually, I am, I'm enjoying it. I wasn't expecting what I got. It's, think about it, it's the combat of Dark Souls and mm. Sekiro, and you know okay. it's the fast-paced Souls-like game, right? But it, it's the mechanics of a dungeon crawler like Diablo. It's a, it's like loot. Every time you kill people, you get money and loot, and and things like that. It's very linear. There's mission to mission. There's regions, and each region has a certain amount of missions, and you have to be a certain level to hit to do them. It's pretty fun. I like it. Okay, it's, now it's definitely com- easier. There's certain, like I, I think it's a, easier does. than it's it's easier than Sekiro. Okay, so when you bring them all up and you just yes. kind of throw them in a circle, what is what are we talking here? Are we talking Dark Souls one, Dark Souls two level difficulty, Demon Souls one? What 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 are we sitting at? It's it's hard because mm. this game has ranged in difficulty. Okay, like the first like two missions, like it's I mean it's easy, but then like I I hit a boss that I literally died. 30 40 times now when you say range difficulty are we talking difficulty spikes that that uh, and i want to add on to this that seem Mm -hmm. um unintended is not the word i want to use but uh basically unnatural what i want to say is is it bad pacing on the game's part or is this just meant to be a hard ass boss i think it was just i think it's just meant to be because i think it's kind of like a skill check okay a skill check boss like like where like i was doing a certain area and then there you know like each mission uh, at the end there's a boss or whatever but then there's another mission and that one mission is just a boss you could tell they okay or you're like okay this is going to be a tough fight because that one mission is just a boss fight and that boss fight took me for a, fucking forever i finally <laughs> did it and it's weird because I finally got a little bit more because you have, you know, like, you know how in Dark Souls you have, like, the your little items and things that you do. You okay. have things like that in this game. And you have uh, things that you can, in Elden Ring, they're called greases. Like, you know, you can enchant your weapon into with something. You could do that in this game as well. And you, you would use that or you would have your um, your guardian spirit, which Who is kind of like this a, game? Um, Koei Tecmo. Thank you. I, I yeah. was like, it's not Bandai, and I, and I go, no, who Koei is it? Tecmo, and Koei Tecmo, of course. Team yeah. Ninja, yes, of course. Yes, yeah, but in, I, there, yeah, there's a lot of mechanics. into. A lot of people don't like it because there's too many mechanics in the game. There's too much going on. It's not too bad. After playing it for a while and knowing what so to do. So you're fine. You're fine. That's not a yeah, criticism that yeah. you, you agree with. Nah. Okay. Nah, it's, it's fine. Is this something... Um, Let's say someone like you that's like kind of fiending off of Elden Ring and they're still kind of really into it. Is that mm. something that you recommend they go do, or is this something that you're like, eh, go, you know, play play a Dark Soul before? I or... would say I would say play the Dark Souls first, and then if you're still feeling all the uh, still feeling, you're like, I need a Souls type game. Go to Neo. Because mm. I was gonna say, if you really want, if you're still on the branch of Elden Ring, the closest thing is literally the Dark Souls series. So you know. Especially Dark Souls Three. Um, that one's really close. Alex, I've been. F- I, I finished Weekend in Five. I got the mm. ending I've never seen before. So every time I uh, I've played Weekend in Five, um, I played it naturally without a guide. So what I would do is I'd sit down and I try to get all the stars of Destiny. Mm. Now, what the stars of Destiny is, Alex? Thank you for asking. They're basically the recruitable characters in the game. They're optional things. I would say a third are mandatory like there's no way to not get them 
but two thirds of them you have to go out and do specific things to capture them. And this is every Suikoden game. You have 108 people you have to get, and most of them, you know, a part, portion of them being like there's no way to not get them. So I finished Suikoden Five, had a great time, saw the ending, it was awesome. Um, when there's like six or seven different endings this game so i have never seen this one i've seen like the uh, like the good ending like the okay ending like the like the little bit better ending and then if you get everything you get like i i what i assume is the canon ending or whatever you want to call it and it was great it was really cool i was like all right this is awesome like i feel it feels a lot better because other ones kind of finished bittersweetly whereas this yeah. one is definitely like you know Everything's all right in the world. Like, ah, uh, we're now now everything's good instead of like a very sour thing happening and kind of dowering the mood. Um, I am kind of similar in your boat, Alex. I, I immediately jumped to so we can have one. Yeah. Previously played this game, but I'd want to play them again because I want to go immediately into two. And if I'm still feeling it, so we can have three, four tactics. I can go into them, play them. I've never played three, four tactics or two. So all of those games, if I get to them, will be brand new experiences, and I'm excited mm-hmm. to try those out. Yeah. When I eventually get to them, Alex. Um, mm. Aside from that, nothing really else. I was gonna save this for queued up, but I'll quickly go over. I started Moon Knight. Uh, honestly, I'm bringing it up because I didn't play. I haven't been playing too many games. Oh, kind of been a lot of, of show. Yes, of course. I, I well, when you said Moon Knight, and I was like, is that a game? What is that? And I was like, oh, the show. <laughs> Shovel Knight is what he means. Yeah, but uh, yeah, the show game. Moon Knight on Disney Plus. I, I'm a huge comic guy, so. I yeah. uh, waited till they all came out. Me and the wife sat down and watched three episodes today, and it's a good show. It's about Moon Knight. Uh, cool. The acting is crazy. Um, yeah. It's basically about um, the main character, uh, uh, Steve Sapper, and then there's someone else. I don't know if that's spoiling it if I say the other character, so I won't. But um, the actor in it, I'm not good with actors, Alex, but um, Oscar Isaac. Thank you, Oscar Isaac. Jesus. He's a great actor because he's yeah he plays Poe Dameron. Yes, yeah, and um, uh, slight slight spoiler for the show, but it's literally the first ten minutes. He has split personalities, so mm-hmm. he's he in one scene he perfectly transitions to the other person, and it reminds me of I think it was the first Superman movie with Christopher Reeves, um. And the moment where he goes to tell Lois he's Superman, you know, he's Clark Kent, and he takes the glasses, and he immediately turns into Superman, and and it's the same person. They're not doing anything to him. But that transition to the, like, you know, awkward, like, Clark Kent, and he takes his glasses, and he, like, switches his posture, and he smiles, and he's got, like, Mm. the hair, and you're like, whoa, like, that's great. He does a very similar move in this show, where, like, he's switches while you're staring at him and it's like jesus like it's kind of, pretty i kind crazy. of thought of i kind of thought about it as um if anybody's as, i mean i guess it's uh, something in Sp- spider-man no way home the green goblin thing yeah it's kind of like that his, yeah kinda yeah, yeah that's a good that's a good point yeah will defoe kind of does that in the spider-man movies too where yeah, like he's he just, just like switches he, he's like he, he's like you know this creepy guy and then he like figures out and he's like you know, he doesn't know what happens in his other stuff, and yeah. he's still um, like him going whatever to whatever his Goblin name is. And, yeah, whatever his name is, I forget his name off the top of my head. But yeah, when he switches from Goblin to Norman Osborn, Norman Osborn, thank you. It's crazy. Big fan. <laughs> Shut up. I was actually kind of <laughs> disappointed. I was like, how do I not remember Spider Man's main villain? What is going on? It's because I've been watching Moon Knight. Mm. It's funny because I watched a movie that had the board Moon in it. It's called Moonfall. It's an interesting sci-fi movie. I like. I enjoyed it. I had fun with it. <laughs> I'm not even gonna explain this movie. I'm not, yeah, I can't. I remember you. You like. You were I like, tried to explain it to you, and, and I, was I was like, like "Cool, <laughs> I'll try and watch it." Uh, just, it's, just, it's, yeah. Just, just it's try. A, it. Let's just say it's like apocalyptic type of movie. Got it. Yep. Alex. Hmm. Rabbit fire. Fortnite is now available via Xbox Cloud Gaming. For free, without a membership. Uh, Xbox basically had this very long blog post that I will not bore the achievers with. So I put it in rapid fire because basically what it is is it's available with cloud gaming. You do not need like uh, other cloud gaming. You you generally would need Xbox Ultimate. You do not. So you, you just you can have an account, sign on with a. Uh, I think you just go to the Game Pass app on your phone, and then boom, you can play it. Now 
Sneakily, this is a way to play Fortnite on an iPhone. It is, if you remember, not available on iPhone right now. Like, you cannot yeah. download it uh, on the App Store. So, boom. Just do that, and it's free. Congrats. Five-year-olds that listen to the show, I guess? I don't know. I'm just kidding if you're a yeah, okay. I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm poking I fun. I actually almost played it yesterday. Uh, we we yeah. started playing Halo Infinite, the new season. We could talk about that later. But uh, I started playing the new season. That was pretty fun. But I almost clicked on Fortnite because I was like, I haven't tried the no-build mode yet. So do it. should I? I tried it part? once, and I prefer it versus the the build. Well, I like, can't I, imagine why. <laughs> well, I, I just like... <laughs> I mean, not even the building. It's just like the mobility. You just feel better. Yeah, it does seem like, uh, yeah, like more I fun. Feel, like too slow, and like this definitely helps it. First this match is... I played on the new season, and I got a win. So I was like, all right, this is got too easy. This is both the. This is what I mentioned before. This is kind of like a rapid fire plus a correction plus a rumor roundup all in one. So I'm just gonna be quick about this one. So last week, if you remember, we had the Starfield um, kind of leak. That happened, and I could not find the original post because there was so much talk about all of it, and it was kind of late in the show, and I couldn't find it. So I just wanted to quickly bring up that the heavy 008, uh, 008 guy specifically was mentioning that the game... Um, Jesus, what is happening to my computer? Sorry. <laughs> there we go. He said there's uh, much too much content to ship on time, so they do not think it will launch. And second, um, he was uh, mentioning that the flying sucks right now. And that was like the two main pointers, and that's what like sent internet into the storm that it was. Hmm. So look, be on the lookout very soon for more Starfield stuff. We're getting very close. Uh, if you remember, this is... Eh, I'll go ahead and do it now. Uh, there was a leaked interview with Jeff Keighley and... Todd Howard about like Starfield stuff. So if that interview has already been done, that is probably pre um filmed for something around summertime, probably at some point Summer Game Fest whenever uh he gets that going. Yep. So I wanted to bring that up there because I couldn't find what the original statement was about. So there you go. Found it. Uh, another quick one, Prince of Persia Sand of Time Remake. Uh, they put out a update to this remake that's still happening, so I will read the update. The development of Prince of Persia Sands of Time Remake will now be led by Ubisoft Montreal. So they actually took it away um, from the original devs. I'll grab you the uh, original devs in a second. But um, that was basically what they the update was, Alex, was... Hey, we're taking this away, and it's just going to be going back to Ubisoft Montreal. So clearly, this thing is in a rough spot. Whatever is going on with this um, remake, uh, I remembered when they first revealed it, Alex. People were complaining mm -hmm. that it's like, this doesn't look good, because they didn't really do much to it, apparently. So mm -hmm. what they did was they took it away, and were like, all right, we're going to work on it. The game was but, originally in the works at Ubisoft's India-based Mumbai and Poon Mumbai. Studios. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, so that that's leaving from Mumbai. So don't know what's going on in there. Maybe it was a... I mean, th those are completely different times, so maybe they was giving them issues or something. I don't know, but that's... Is this, is, is, is this being asked for? People like Prince of Persia. I mean, Ubisoft, I guess... Uh, but, Ubisoft is making it, some interesting decisions lately, man. Oh, that's... Know. That's... Yeah, this is the least of their issues, frankly. Um, yeah. Is this Prince of Persia remake? We're going to talk about Skull and Bones in there at the end of the show, but yeah, that's a good point. Like at this point, does anyone care? Because I I know it kind of had a big kind of blow up when people announced like the remake, but it, I mean that feels like forever ago. Now we've had I, COVID. I just feel like but... they're trying too hard now because I feel like anybody that looks at Ubisoft now, anytime you, it, like it's just known for it's like oh you you know uh, what does Ubisoft do? Oh okay, only two things. <laughs> Assassin's Creed, Far Cry. All right, that's it. And they're very similar games, so it's hard to. Uh, yeah. I guess not similar, but they do the same kind of thing differently. So, yeah, yeah I kind of see what you're saying. I mean, Ubisoft definitely is. They kind of went back to 2000. Oh God, 
like 2006 2008 era sort of that's not really the time frame but there was a time where now actually no it was around X assassin's creed unity so this would have been like 2014-esque era like the yeah. 20 the early 2010s was pretty rough for them they kind of went back to like old ubisoft where they kind they're kind of resting they're not really doing anything exciting they're releasing the same games over and over again i know a lot of people like far cry 6 but i just could not get excited because it just felt because i like i said i've played every far cry it just when i went to play it i was like yikes man this is just the same thing man i don't really want to do this because i've just played like a trillion other open worlds now is that far cry 6's problem i mean not necessarily but Are we there we go. Issues? We're good. Yes, we were, but we're back. We're back. Everything's okay. okay. Everything's fine. Achievers, keep your eyes on the road. <laughs> the question, are what? you hardwired? Yes, I am. I am. Is that, cool. I think it's just... Is your computer freaking out? I think it's just the computer freaking out. Also, OBS, I think it's just being a little strange right now. Mm. Uh, everything seems to be okay right now. Achievers, I am now starting a petition for toward, towards Elijah getting a new PC. It Look. used to be me. Now That's the, true. Now the now the I forgot about that. Yeah, it is. Well, what's funny is, I used to be able to. I used to do this off a MacBook. Yeah, I mean, it, we used to. Have, <laughs> yeah, it used to be pretty rough to run this show. I mean, there, there, there was like a single like slip of duct tape holding this show together, and if it popped, it was all over. But uh, yeah. but now it's a, a a lot better. But it's not perfect. It definitely is yeah. not perfect. So, do I need a new computer? Yes. Am I going to get one soon? I don't know. Probably not. Anyways. Yeah. Rumor roundup. During the episode of Jeff Scrubs Nintendo Podcast, Jeff did claim, and he seemed pretty confident that there is a Zelda double pack coming. Uh, it's going to be around October. It will include Wind Waker and Twilight Princess. Alex, not hmm. too much else about this. He seemed pretty confident, uh, and he also gave a date. Like, you know jeff talks a lot of rumors and i actually love him for that because we don't really have anyone like that everyone kind of is friends with each other in the industry so no one like spills the beans a lot so jeff is very fun because he'll just say stuff now this is i think an example of something that he clearly is confident about because he was even able to say a month so i'm like whoa okay so this is probably coming i'm not shocked because uh we had the triple pack of mario games so yeah. this isn't too far out of the realm of possibility, right? Wind Waker, Twilight Princess, easy sixty dollars Nintendo's ever made. Um, curious if they will also do what they did with the All Star Pack it's gonna and be make 60? it. Yeah, the All Star Pack was, wasn't it? Let me see. Pretty sure it was. I think that I think that was, but that had three games. This only has two. Yeah, but the Zelda games they get to make. Oh, they're bigger. I don't know. Are you saying Zelda's bigger than Mario? No, but why would it cost more? Or would you think it costs less? I mean, because there's still only two games, I would say it would cost like 40 bucks. This is Nintendo. That's true. Let Nintendo doesn't give an F. It, let, let me remind everyone that they charged you more for a game that came out like years earlier. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze was a Wii U game, and I believe that released at $50. It was released for 60 bucks when they re-released it on Switch. So they made you pay more for it. So, I mean, Nintendo will per- charge you a premium because they know people will pay for it. What is the, what is the easiest way of making money? Zelda and Mario. So, the, I mean, honestly, they could have made the Mario game $80. People still would have bought it. Yeah. The price they didn't. It's probably, it's probably because they probably didn't make it more than sixty because they didn't do anything to the games. They literally just farted it on a disc and sent it out. Yeah. Are you excited for this at all? I haven't played either of them, if I'm being honest. So I've heard, I've heard always heard Twilight Princess was good. I just never, I've never heard. I've I never heard it was an, it. I heard it was acquired taste because it oh, was okay. definitely a emo time for zelda i guess is what you could say it reminds me of um kind of like the everything is dark period of both gaming and movies where it's like oh we could be moody and dark we Mm. used to be cartoons but now we can stab things i'm a wolf (laughs) i do want to play the complete opposite of wind waker is like very is a very cartoony cartoony. (laughs) dancing yeah i agree i would love actually to play both of them because again i have never played either one i was not a big nintendo kid aside from um 
having a Nintendo 64 and a GameCube as a kid, but we didn't have it for long because we quickly got a PS2 and we sold all the other stuff. So Twilight Princess has a 96 on Metacritic, if that matters to you. I mean, yeah, I mean, Metacritic still matters. I, I, I look, people love that game. Yeah, I, I'm not here to say it's good or bad. I have not played it. I have heard yeah. that it is the um, popular one to now make fun of because uh, Link turns into a wolf, which is just a strange thing that happens. So pretty weird. Yeah, but I, I, I what I remember is the beginning level being in like a tower. You could change to a wolf and the strange small lady with the brooms for like a head thing. She was very weird, but I remember that and she could ride on your back and stuff. It's weird. Huh. weird game, but I want to play it. Yeah, probably Wind Waker more than that, though, because I don't know what that I don't know what Wind Waker even is about. <laughs> and I guess I don't either about twilight princess but wind waker i have zero idea what the plot is so i just want to i want to play it just satisfy my curiosity at this point yeah i always enjoyed wind waker but i never beat it jason schreier follows up on a rumor that we had last week if you remember we and uh we were covering the two world of warcraft mobile games one of them was like a a Pokemon go, uh, go slash game and another one was like a Clash of Clans type game. So the Pokemon Go game was actually canceled earlier this year. The other one will be revealed um, basically next week. As of recording, if you listen to this on a Monday, the week that we're on, it should be revealed. And this is via Jay Stratus straight from his Twitter account. So he seems pretty confident. I'm pretty confident. And it's been linked like three different ways. Thank God we're not getting that Pokemon Go World of Warcraft because that just sounded awful. So thank yeah, God. Thank was... God that's not saying the anything. Like, what are, they, what are you gonna what are you gonna capture? Like, I, uh, there's animals in World of Warcraft, so I'm imagining I know, them. But what are you gonna capture? What are you gonna capture? A boar? <laughs> You there are more in, in there. times in the montage on that South Park episode. See, now I'm curious if you'd be able to capture like orcs and stuff because now you're capturing like sentient beings that mm-hmm. gets kind of dicey now do you are you able to capture the dragons those are also sentient that gets a little strange right now this might be a strange question alex what do you think the average intelligence of a pokemon is are they like dogs in their world i would assume they have some sort of intelligence because it's about like me yeah, i look at pikachu is pikachu yeah. just a smart dog because a border collie is pretty smart. You could train you could train a dog to do a lot of stuff. You ever seen those sheep dogs? Those things are crazy. Mm-hmm. How much stuff they can do and they know. So what what <laughs> my point is and what I want to bring up is uh how strange is this kind of Pokemon thing they got going on? So they're enslaving these small beings, right? To do okay. their bidding and they're gonna make them fight each other. So they're basically they're basically cartoon cockfights, right? Mm-hmm. And they're making them fight each other. Are these things like sentient of what's going on? So they didn't know that, like, hey, I'm now partnered to this person and I will now fight for its bidding. Yeah. Do they have a sense of morality also? Do the do the evil Pokemon know that they're evil, or are they just obeying this guy that is evil? I mean, I would assume are they like so. Chickens? I mean, uh, uh, what, what was what was uh? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, are they like chickens i don't know uh, do, is it as is it, it does it literally stop at this guy said a command i will follow it i mean like, and aside imagine, from I mean, that it's just brutal, like, when we first saw him he was a dick he was he was and, so and, they I probably mean, don't have then, morals <laughs> or some sort I mean, of social I mean, they structure made you, they, made, they made you feel super bad for charmander when he, yeah, when he, almost, he died. almost died yeah yeah that was that was a tearjerker and they do yeah. make them show like some sort of emotional intelligence like uh i, I yeah. bring up the charizard episode when he almost cry, uh, cried uh yeah. when, when charizard was crying when he had to leave him with the female charizard and i was like it, that was a weird um, episode I mean, there was like yeah. a herd of them <laughs> i was like all right so these are herd animals i guess <laughs> these dragons <laughs> they need their puffins yeah they definitely need puffins uh, but yeah, I just want to quickly bring up because it just hit my mind. Like, how sentient are these things? That because because if I'm Team Rocket, I go, I catch mm-hmm. a Pokemon, I summon it. Does that thing know? Like, hey, I want you to kill this kid. Like, is it gonna be like, no, this is a child, or is it gonna be like, all right, you you're the guy with the ball. I have to obey you. I mean, 
Hangar 13 <laughs> bosses just left. This is a new report by Ethan Catch at Kotaku. It's stating uh, a couple things. A couple interesting things, Alex. Hmm. First off, there's a new Mafia game being developed at Hangar 13 currently. Aptly named Mafia 4, codenamed Nero. Now this comes with some potential bad news for some long time fans as well. The studio head is departing the studio. Aiden Blackman is leaving the studio after seven years spent working on Mafia 2. And um, I believe he was there for mostly for Mafia 3 as well. He might have been hired on near the end of Mafia 2 and then starting Mafia 3. For seven years, yeah, roughly around there. They're also important to note, they, don't, they didn't actually disclose this in their like public announcement, but they also mm-hmm. lost their COO, a guy named Matthew Urban. Uh, he was the director of studio operations for Mafia 3 in 2016, and then he was pr- promoted for the Mafia uh, Definitive Edition to be the COO. Replacing Blackman will be Nick Baines, current head at uh, Hangar 13's Brick- uh, Brickton in the UK office, which is to be believed heading development on this title. So more about the title. It is a prequel to the Mafia trilogy and will be made in the Unreal Engine 5 instead of their in-house engine. Alex. Mm. Not only they're losing their studio head, they're losing their COO. Seemingly for creative differences, right? This is a strange kind of coincidence yeah. that we're hitting. We're also we're hearing that Mafia 4 is going full steam ahead, but they're also losing a studio head and yeah. their CEO. Like, okay, hey, we'll so. start a new game. Hey, by the way, we're gonna shut down. <laughs> by the way, they love <clears throat> so pretty strange. We lost a studio head. Which he wasn't there for a super long time, right? But he was there for like seven years. So this isn't like some giant vet. He was actually him and Matthew Urban um, were both actually from Lucasfilms. Uh, the um, uh, Hayden Blackman was working on Star Wars: Force Unleashed too. Mm. So he was with Lucasfilms for a while, and then when they closed, I imagine he went here. Yeah. So we're we're. Alex, we could take this a number of ways. We could talk about these potential departures and what this could mean for the studio's kind of environment. Uh, we can go with the actual video game. Talk about the video game if you want. Mafia 4. Which would you like to talk about? What's grabbing you? Let's go with the game. Okay. Because... I want to talk about the game, too. I don't think we can... I don't think there's too much more to say about the gentleman leaving. Clearly, it's some sort of creative difference. Yeah, because my thing is with the game is like... how. Early in development, so we're probably not seeing this yeah. for another four years, at least. I'm. I mean, how did they ever fix three? I think they kind of did. Achievers, if you don't know what we're talking about, so I want to say like seven months ago, almost now, <laughs> when they released the Mafia Definitive Edition, me and Alex played through the game, had fun. Alex told me like, "Hey, Mafia Three looked really weird." I logged in the other day, and I was like, "That's weird." I wonder if it was just your TV being weird or something. Nope. So I go over to Mafia Three. We both blew it loaded up at the same time because I think we, I think I had just finished Mafia One or something. Load up Mafia Three, and this looks like a 360 game. And I'm not, I, I know, oh hyper, high prob, you know, you're being hyperbolic. It wasn't that bad, guys. I really need you guys to to believe me here. It might still look this way. I don't know. I think they fixed it. I remember patch notes saying like, hey, we're trying to fix Mafia 3. I don't know what they did to it. I don't know how you make a game look worse, really, if I'm being honest. Dude, everything I, was like red. There was this re- strange kind of tint, but also everything looked degraded. So like almost like the textures weren't loading in correctly. And I mean, it. Yeah. this was universal. I want to say maybe the cars looked OK or something. Something looked I feel like something looked fine. But I feel like like just about everything, it was almost like the texture was not loading correctly or something was off and everything just... I mean, really, everything looked bad. Yeah. I think the frame rate was also messed up at the time, too. Yeah, there were, there were some things So I was driving and I was like, oh my god, I need to get out of here. I tried to go back to it because I, mean, I, 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 I had re- replayed the 1 and 2 thing. Yes. And I, I was like, oh, you know, I forgot that, you know, Vito's in the third one. So I was like, oh, I want to see my boy. And then I started it. Oh, my God, dude. Uh, I was like, no. Like, why, I don't, why does it look this bad? I was, I, I messaged it you. It looks real like, bad. Why does it look like shit? <laughs> yeah, I literally asked him. I was like, maybe it's your TV. I can't remember. I literally said, like, how does it look worse? <laughs> There's no way, right? Oh, they found a way. I don't know oh, if they, it was a yeah. coding issue or, I mean... 
not to throw anyone under the bus, but like someone at Hangar 13 just doesn't know what they're doing and they fucked up the space bar something. in the space bar turbo taxed it or something i don't know they set <laughs> something up and it looked bad so yeah. hopefully that was fixed but yeah back to Ma- mafia 4 um we're here it's early so it's hard to give like full concrete details they have plenty of time to f- to find new new uh talent for these positions it's not like they're leaving like midway through development apparently it's pretty early um so i'm not necessarily worried about the game yet if i start hearing like you know gameplay designers are leaving yeah you know motion art you know large people at the studio just leaving mid-project uh halo infinite by the way that's something that happened with halo infinite like three times then i start going like hmm this is peculiar Mm-hmm. But they, they have plenty of time to find new talent, so I'm not too worried about that. Two, Alex, getting Unreal Engine 5, which I'm elated. I'm a happy. lot of games, a lot a of games lot. are being switched to Unreal Engine 5. I think um, that and... speaks a lot to how the engine is impressing people. I really do. Yeah, I mean the the game that I was waiting for the the day the 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 one that oh, fuck it's like last of us mixed with division the one of the day before i remember you told me about this i, I don't it, remember the name it I was coming it. out in june or july yeah and they delayed it because they're switching over to unreal engine 5 and it's coming out march 2023 now so they delayed it a year oh yeah because they're switching everything over to the new engine and i'm like damn oh, really? oh, okay now i'm by no means an expert on engines nor did i know too much about them so take one of great assault but i've heard people kind of describe it apparently like you can there's ways of like there's so many ways that streamline for instance like if you need to do a building apparently what you can do is like tell it like hey i need a five-story building Mm -hmm. and they will procedurally generate things inside of it so like if you look at a window they'll be like you know there'll be a like all you have to do is tell it like hey i need for instance you're you're, let's say we're making spider-man 3 and we're using unreal engine 5 i can say like i need the empire state building it's this many things this many windows it will auto generate like each room and it will randomly put things in there so like it'll be like all right there's a desk and a wastebasket and this one the desk is on the other side with the wastebasket behind them with like three different pictures on the wall and then you know so it will procedurally generate much faster so you don't have to go in there and like manually do each room and then like copy the copy that basic format put it somewhere else you don't want to make it look the exact same so you kind of like change it a little bit so apparently Mm -hmm. they'll just procedure generate a bunch of stuff that's just one example of like how crazy it can get as far as i understand it is a great engine so i really do think the amount of people that we see utilizing this engine is speaking a lot to, to how good the engine is. Plus, we saw that very pretty demo, Alex, not too long ago, that I was like... Uh, do you talk about the Matrix thing? So, yes, Matrix 1 as well, but also basically what... Uh, like, when we first saw it, when it was like the sand. They were showing oh, the okay. sand and all that. I think yeah, it's yeah. it looks a lot like Forspoken, honestly. I think that's technically what the game is. Okay, yeah. Anyways. But, but the sand... Um, like it was showing you like this, there's this many polygons or something in the, and so like it gets very impressive very quickly so i'm excited honestly because if mm. everyone's seeing potential then i'm like all right cool this might go somewhere alex mm. shocking bobby kotick's getting sued again New York City is demanding Activision provide a bunch of documents, including a lot of details on the Microsoft deal, info on five possible providers, description of sales talks, and much more. This is all coming out. Um, I found this on Axios, actually, but uh, you can read this a bunch of uh, places. You can find out more details online if you really want to get much more details on this. I really don't know too much about this stuff. I actually recommend everyone go check out, again, we're going to say this name again, Hoag's Law. Go check him out. It's great, YouTube, if you want to know legal ramifications, what this might mean, how big of a deal this is, etc. Go check them out. As far as I understand, it is not a huge deal. It's not like, oh, the Microsoft deal is going to end now or something. You know, They're mm-hmm. basically saying, like, why are you selling so fast? Seems like you're trying to escape legal prosecution in some way. So just check them out to have like a more thorough look at him. 
<laughs> They're probably like, man, why are you up in my business? <laughs> Look, let's just all relax, okay? Look, I, if, I <laughs> to, if I want to sell, I'll fucking sell. Look, I'll right? sell, all right? I didn't do anything. Look, I threatened to kill a woman one time, and I was freaking out about it. <laughs> Embracer <laughs> Group. Alex. Hmm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, this would have been the big news of the week if it did not get announced, like, the f- first day of the week. So, <laughs> quite a surprise rippled throughout the industry this week. Square Enix provi- uh, said that they are selling their Western Studios and IP to Embracer Group. This includes Crystal Dynamics, Eidos Montreal, Square Enix Montreal, and the related IPs attached to them. Yes, Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, Thief, Legend of Cain, a lot more than that. Those are just ones I can grab. This now affects 1,100 employees as well. So Embracer Group is gaining both all those studios and all those employees and all those IP. Now, this purchase wasn't necessarily the most surprising factor, I would say. What was even more surprising, Achievers, was that this purchase was for $300 million. $300 million. Dollars. Now that is a lot of money for me and Alex. That is seem like a lot in their case. That is that is fuck you money. That is like that's what you're worth, pretty much. Yeah, they're saying Crystal Dynamics, Adios Montreal, Square Enix Montreal, Tomb Raider's IP, Deus Ex, Thief, and Legacy of the King, plus eleven hundred studios. Or sorry, employees. Three hundred million dollars. That pales into comparison every other deal that's happened recently. And it shows us either two things, Alex. It shows either an incredible weakness in Square Enix's position to negotiate, right? I imagine Square Enix's lawyers and financiers, not dumb. So either they had some sort of huge glaring weakness in where they could not negotiate something. Yeah. Or Sony just doesn't, or sorry, Square Enix just does not care. And they were like, we need to sell these things now. Yeah. Third, probably most likely, Square is actually trying to sell to someone else. And they needed to dip these studios in order to facilitate this other deal. And there's a radical option for that. This is something we're not thinking of. Now, before we get into our talk, Alex, I want to just bring up some numbers for reference for some achievers out there. Just so we know that $300 million is pretty much a, an incredible amount of money, not in the highway, in the low term. So, Insomniac, famously $229 million. For just Insomniac, $229 million. First off, that's a steal. You got the studio that makes Spider-Man, which sold the most copies out of any uh, Sony exclusive ever made. You got it for $229 million. Bethesda, of course, $7.5 billion, right? I wouldn't say they're basically the same things, but I'm just trying to paint a picture for the achievers out there. Bioware famously sold for $775 million. Bioware. Tencent buying Riot Games for $400 million. And Embracer, Embracer Group themselves buying Saber Interactive for $525 million. Alex, mm. I was floored when I read this. I, had, I retweeted the tweet... I was. I basically said, upon first viewing, this price is insane. I don't understand what is going on, and I need to educate myself further to kind of understand. And upon further education, I still don't understand why it's so cheap. Now, I really do think this has something to do with something else. There is yeah. no way Square Enix said, let's sell all of our Western IP for $300 million and went, Sounds good to us with nothing else prior lined up. There has to be a major acquisition with uh, some other entity closely after this, Alex. Now, do you agree? Do you disagree? What are you, no, what are I, you thinking? No, I, I definitely agree. It's, it's definitely, I think, for $300 million. Option, yeah, that's, that's, dude, that's nothing. It's nothing to these like, companies. I know like, I, I know that sounds like a lot. And Achievers, it is. For, like, for think a, of it for this a way. person, it's a lot of money. But. Think, think of it this way. Marvel Spider-Man for PS4, which, okay, 
Insomniac, you said it was what, what 229 million dollars, which is insane. Okay, insane that okay. Sony was able to buy them for that much. J- just crazy. Marvel Spider Man on PS4 sold over 13 million copies. Now, if you multiply that and each copy is 60 bucks, that's yeah. 780 million dollars. Yeah, they literally tripled the amount with that with a single game, game, which is probably the average is probably closer to 40, even so. So there's so even, so now even so, it's, so now this game is worth more than this whole acquisition, <laughs> dude. I want to. You bring up a good point, right? Tomb Raider game sales. I want to see how much has Tomb Raider by itself sold. So Which I believe one, the. Like, mo- I, I I, I want to see the series. I think that's gonna be hard okay. to find though. Yeah. Um, see if what, see what you can find. I'm gonna dig around really quick. Uh, so I I know that the original Tomb Raider, I believe the second Tomb Raider was the one that sold the most, and the reboot in twenty th- I think it was 2013. Yeah, 2013. Um, sold the second most. Yeah, it sold. From, uh, this is October 2021. It sold more than 14.5 million copies. 14.5 million. Depending on what the average is, uh, I mean that's a lot. That's that's a good bit of money. As of October 2021, Action Adventure Series Tomb Raider has generated approximately 85 million lifetime unit sales. That's as not, of 2021. I mean that's that's a that's a lot of units. Now Tomb Raider has had a lot of games, so obviously yeah. it's not that's not the best, especially when you can compare it to some others, but. Dude, just but just that game. But just that game. It gets yeah. Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider might arguably be one of the most identifiable the identifiable characters in gaming. Mm-hmm. Aside from like Mario and Zelda. Yeah. Which most people don't even know who who Zelda is. They know who they don't know who Link is. Yeah. So Zelda is the woman people. Yeah, most people will think Zelda's the guy. So. Yeah. But Alex, I mean is there any? I mean, is there any other bo- uh, like wh- the, either Embracer just has them? I mean, frankly, uh, for lack of a better word, did Embracer just have Square by the balls in some way? And they're just like, hey, you're you know, you're I you've th- had <sighs> you've had bad track re- rec- track records with Deus Ex's recent release, Tomb Raider's recent release. I believe sold worse than both ga- both copies. I believe it did. I'd have to check on that. Um. We we know what happened with Marvel's Avengers. I mean, that, I'm not gonna. I'm not pretending like they were in the strongest position, but to sell yeah. for three hundred million dollars, there. I just can't wrap my. I just can't. I mean, I. It could, it's like it could a, also be, it's, it's like a math equation that's missing half of it. I, I just there's just I mean, no like, way. I mean, also, I mean, maybe like so they're maybe like you said, they're trying to drop some people to be the uh, to be acquired. I, I really from someone else. I have to imagine that's why. I have to imagine they have another deal lined up. Maybe in six months we'll know what it is. Maybe it's Sony. And Sony goes, hey, look, we would love your Japan studios. Mm-hmm. We cannot take your Western studios, though. We just can't. It's, it, it's going to mess up. Maybe there's something in the books that's going to mess up everything. Maybe there's something going on. Who knows? I, I really don't know. I can't imagine a reason why you wouldn't want them. Maybe they just don't see value in them. And they're like, look, we are not paying the money for these studios. Like, Just get rid of them. I don't know, but this is what I mean. This is what this is what, and also there was a really weird statement by Square Enix saying that this three hundred million dollars would help them fund, um, uh, like uh, uh, NFTs and things. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? So this is weird. This is weird all around. What they'd say they'll do with the money. Um, also, I'm not a huge fan of Embracer Group, mostly because like they're, f- I mean, frankly, well, they're says- boring. From, uh, from I don't know if this was in the article, but um, but from seeing it, it says Square Enix was was selling it sells Tomb Raider to invest more in their block in blockchain. That's what games. I was saying. Yeah, blockchain is where. Okay, yeah. So, so, this is so that's AI so and cloud that was gaming. so that was in their um press release basically, and I, really three hundred million dollars is Alex. That is nothing. Three hundred million dollars will fund one triple A game. Yeah, three hundred million dollars, like, is I think how much I think God of War cost to develop. So three, 
you're you're telling me you're using that to feel your blockchain games? No. I, first of all, either I, I do not believe that's the reason, or you are misguided, my friend, because that is not how that works. You can't just... W- fun what? No, no, no one even knows what blockchain games are yet. So, what uh, are you using that to, like, invest and try to figure out, like, how to sell it or something? I, I don't know, but when they said that, I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? All right, well, the, game, the God of War game generated half... A billion, five hundred million in revenue, but I'm trying to see how much it did, did it take take to oh, cost. I want to say it was. I want to say it was that much. If not, Last of Us Two, Part Two is easily that much amount of money. Easily. Yeah. There we go. Especially when you count for Naughty Dog. Um. Uh, and also, as a reminder, if you, if you're like, who's Embracer Group? THQ Nordic is Embracer Group. Just, just in case mm-hmm. Chief at home is like, who are these people? By the way, THQ Nordic now has like a million studios and a thousand games in development no one cares about um so here here it is i, I have a bunch of subsidiaries as of may 2022 embrace group has 10 operative groups consisting of 124 internal studios and publishers for an overall group of about 14,000 employees in 45 countries alex doesn't that just all sound gross <laughs> like what why do you have so much why do you have so many things under one umbrella and also like do we even care about a third of these games there's coke media that no one cares about i know they have vertigo media i think people i I don't remember what they've made and of course they bought saber and active thq nordic keeps remastering things Mm-hmm. Well, THQ isn't THQ Nordic currently in the works of making like two hundred titles or whatever they, they said. What was it? it? Was like including like remakes or, or whatever with new and new IPs. Well, then it wasn't that a thing like a long time ago. That's what they said. It was. I want to say what they probably meant was like Embracer were, Group is. Maybe? I can't imagine THQ Nordic, which by the way has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seven. They have nineteen studios. Ooh. There's no way they they are making a hundred games. I remember what you're talking about, Alex. Like they they yeah. I believe the headlines were THQ Nordic says they're making a hundred games. I think they meant yeah. Embracer Group is because Embracer Group like I just, 124 internal studios by the way i believe this is before this is before they add all the square enix so they're gonna have even more than this which is fucking crazy it's crazy it's crazy and also t- uh, a recent game coming from thq nordic of course saints row uh, i believe um volition is working on that right so uh i think so yes it is um, yeah saints row 4 yep No, sorry. They worked on the previous one. Did they still are they? Who's working on the new Saints Row? I thought it was Volition. Hold on, Saints Row reboot. I'll make sure I'm not wrong about this. Deep Silver. Sorry, I was wrong. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. The publisher is Deep Silver. It is Volition. Yes, I was right. Okay. The thing I was reading was incorrect. I apologize, Achievers. Yeah, they uh, they are working on the Saints Row reboot. So. Time will tell, Alex. Time will tell. Yep. I um. I'll be honest. I'm I, I'm kind of disappointed, frankly. I, I don't want Embracer Group to own these studios only because like it seems like they can't manage studios properly. I don't. Yeah. I barely understand what Embracer Group even is because it's just so many studios, and it seems like it's like who like, how do they how do they even manage these many studios? Is it just like that? Well, we own you now. Figure it out. The, the thing is, I don't think they're not. I don't think they are. I think. I think. I, it's worrisome because I feel like they're like, oh, we're gonna buy all these for three hundred million. So that means they're, they're worth nothing to you. So if anything, what we talked about last week, what? if they don't, if, if they don't make like like if they keep getting like, oh, you know, Marvel's Avengers didn't do that good. The, the two major games didn't do that good. Hey, I'm gonna start shutting down studios. That's not that's not forget. Crystal Dynamics is missing probably like half of their staff because they're helping Perfect Dark over at uh, initi- uh the initiative. Yeah. So maybe lots of weird ass stuff happening with the studio. 
with these uh, studios. I frankly am confused. Maybe maybe I'll maybe we'll know more in a few months and it'll be clear. But I I just I I'm excited to potentially hear if someone has a good reason for this because I can't think of one. Yes, I agree. If you have a point, maybe an achievers at home thinking this, their last few games have not performed well, right? You you say Crystal Dynamics, Marvel's Avengers flat on its face. Idos Montreal, the last game they made was uh Shadow of the Tomb Raider? I think. Uh, yeah, I think so. I think that was their last No, no, sorry. Of course. Uh Guardians of the Galaxy. I just want y'all made Guardians of the Galaxy with Chris and Dynamics, I believe, right? Wasn't that a co- was that co developed? Which one? No, just Idos Montreal. And Square Enix Europe was publishing the title. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. That was their last oh, title. Gotcha. I, I don't gotcha. know why I thought Crystal made that game. But uh, so, I mean, Guardians was semi successful. I don't think it was crazy successful because, frankly, it's a Guardians game. But do you previous... think it was more successful, Avengers or Guardians? It's a good question. Critically, of course, Guardians. Commercially, yeah. I mean, I want to say, I want to say, Aven- I'm assuming Avengers has done better because they've just, had more DLC and more well, add-ons. What I would say is, Avengers probably did good because probably a bunch of people pre-ordered it and didn't think, and then bought it, and then we're like, yeah. "Fuck, this sucks!" But they, you already got your money. It's like, it's like when, it's like with Cyberpunk. So many, many people pre-ordered the game. It doesn't matter if the game didn't work; they already got your money. So who cares? You know. So I, I feel like that was an issue. That possibly was an issue with Avengers. I'm not sure how many copies they sold. I don't think a lot. I don't, have they ever said? I imagine that you don't want to say. Let me see. Yeah, you check Avengers. And I'll... Um, uh, in, in closing, Achievers, I, I mean, uh, let us know in the comments if you, if you have a good reason for this, because I, I really can't think of it. According to the report from industry analyst David Gibson, Marvel Avengers... Cost well over 100 million to produce, but only sold about 3 million copies, resulting in a net loss of, in a net loss of 63 million. That's less than Anthem, a game where a lot of things infamously went wrong. So what went wrong with Avengers? So they did worse than Anthem. Anthem had a lot of hype behind it. That's to be true. Fair. And it was Bioware. Bioware. People believed. That's. I feel like that's why Bioware is such in a bad spot. Because you've three lost the trust, man. This is what million? happens. But yeah, three million. That's that's pretty bad. I didn't know it was that few. Uh, now, uh, to be fair, that's an analyst guessing, but I imagine he's not far off. So, and also, it costs more than a hundred million to develop that game. I feel because I remember hearing that that game was in development for a long well, it time. Says, yeah, it said costs well over a hundred million. So I mean, it could be. It, yeah, I think I uh, wouldn't be shocked if it hit two hundred million just because it was in development for so long. Well, well, it says that uh, when I was reading, I was looking for the cost for God of War. It says God of War was a hundred, uh, like a hundred, a pl- hundred plus. So it probably was between a hundred and two hundred million. Yeah. So they, they had. You're saying God of War had the same budget as Marvel Avengers? <laughs> <laughs> there's no way that's true. That's right? fucking wild, <laughs> <That's>, there's, <laughs> dude. There's no way. If that is true, holy shit. <laughs> that is that is a great what, what, that what is a great one to one comparison. Like you're telling this me, is how, this is like oh, this is how you somebody knows what to do with their money. This is how somebody doesn't know what to do with their money, dude. Clearly, they had no idea what they were doing with ventures. I mean, yeah. they it was it was like grabbing a square cube and a circle hole and just I mean just banging it until it went through and it just nothing happened. Yeah. Strange. Fuck. Many rumors swirling around a potential set of Warner Brothers Gaming Studios yet again. This time, it comes from Imran Khan, news editor over at fanbyte.com. This is from his actual Twitter account. Quote, Couldn't get enough confirmation to actually write a post about it, but hearing a decent bit of chatter this week about WB Discovery shopping the game development studios around. Interesting parties include EA, Take-Two, Microsoft, Sony, Tencent, NetEase, and PUBG Corp. WB uh, Warner Brothers Discovery wants to sell studios and license IP, supposedly. End quote. Now, 
Warner Brothers board did announce back in May of 2021 that they were interested in selling a part of Warner Brothers after the Discovery merger. It did not state, however, what part would be sold and what that includes. They just said a part. I remember prior, Alex, if you remember, we actually covered this last year that they were trying to sell parts of their studios off. Um, AT&T was to try and pay off some of their debts going into this kind of like merge thing. And apparently they decided like, no, we're not going to sell. We find like too much value in them. But it's strange that we're getting another rumor yet again, potentially incorrect, because he does say, like, couldn't find enough evidence. But we're seeing yet another acquisition talks. Now, I don't think it's incorrect to bring up that I really do think, a lot of people have said this, I really do think the Blizzard Activision entire deal has just exploded people's minds as, like, we need to sell now if we ever if we're gonna sell in 20 years we need to sell now like if we have any idea like we should sell we need to do it now while the getting is good so i want to say i kind i feel like i believe that originally when they were shopping around they're like nah you know we're not really seeing any anyone interested now when now they can come out and be like oh i mean if you're willing to pay that much money i mean we'll definitely sell Batman Arkham, do you? You know, we'll sell these IPs that clearly someone's gonna want. We'll sell y'all our studios. We don't care. We got fucking rock Xbox steady. Opening up their checks right there. Hey, how much? God, it. It's hard to believe Microsoft would even touch this because they they're they've got every sort of legal th- a telescope on everyone in this Activision deal. I feel like they can't touch anything until it's done. And then they can go about like buying smaller studios again. But I feel like they have to. They have to be like, we wish, but we can't jeopardize this. Act- we're trying to fuck it by Call of Duty, man. We can't. We can't mess with this. We can't mess with this. We're trying to get approved. Yeah, Alex. What What are your thoughts on this? Hmm. First off, do you see I, it? Do you see it in, even in reality? Is this something no, that you think I, can yeah, happen? I I definitely think I I think they're gonna sell for sure. Oh, um, so I you're com- you're pretty confident. Yeah, I feel I feel like if Embracer Group just bought <laughs> artists, uh, all of these motherfuckers, <laughs> that's a good, that's a good point. I mean, I think it's gonna happen. I mean, oof, one of the interest parties include EA Take Two. Oof. Get it out of here, Tencent. Stop it. Yeah, look, hey, you got a lot of money in the words I just said. PUBG Corp is hilarious. I don't think they have enough money that's to be thrown. I don't think they have enough money to be thrown around look, to, look, to be look, competing look, with NetEase look, and Tencent. Look, they're gonna they're gonna have that Callisto protocol. It's in the same world. <laughs> look, look at our pre order numbers. All right, we can get we we. It's like stocks. You can sell no, off I'm margins. Excited. I'm excited for that game. No, me too. Me too. Uh, I wasn't talking shit about them. No, no. Um, yeah, I don't. I just my thing is like I think they will sell. It just it, the thing is to who. And I'm worried it's going to be another issue. Uh, what was it? The thing we were talking about last week. It was just like some random. Yeah, um, a firm. It, just it, a, it, a, 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 an a equity. Firm buying just just an equity firm comes in and he's like, we'll buy you. It's like, bro. What? You, you know anything get, about video games? Get the fuck out of here. Now, that could be a good Go or a bad thing. Their abacus. <laughs> I feel like that could be a good or bad thing. A good thing yeah. where they don't know about video games. So they are just like. Every every like annual year meeting, they come in they're like, "Hey, this is cool. How, are you making money, right? Okay, bye." You're, or there's you're, the bad you're the thing. Profit, you're, you're yeah, you're in profit line, right? Okay, yeah, cool. okay, cool. What's your profit margin? We'll see you <laughs> later. Or we get the kind of rumors around the Battlefront Two situation that we had long ago. We had where I heard stories that higher ups from ea would come in and play test their games play test in quotes not really play testing they, they would give them builds of the game Check them out they would play them and they would finish and they'd be like you know they'd be like hey what's your thoughts and, the, and they would go like yeah it was good but but like where's chewbacca and you know yeah. where's han so where's luke skywalker and that made them kind of like pigeonhole random scenarios into their like uh, campaign thing, and and it felt lame because it's literally tacked on, like they literally tacked it on. So 
that's that could be a bad scenario if some random private equity firm just comes in and is like, yeah, we'll buy you because we are we just have billions of dollars and we don't care. We could buy you for a billion dollars easily. Hmm. Jesus. Which is, by the way, if we get a sale of Warner Brothers Discovery in the same year that Square Enix sold the Western Studios for three hundred million dollars, Alex, I, Warner Brothers Discovery think, won't sell it, for less than a billion dollars for all their stuff. I imagine. I was, I was about to say, do you think that Warner? Do you think Warner Brothers is going to sell for less or for more? Way more. You get Rocksteady. You get, uh, do you? No, they they'd be like you. You can give for eight hundred. I think whatever p- a person would pay, they would have to overpay just because that's the market we're in right now. Yeah. I think what happened with the square is just an anomaly. Something is going on there, and we just don't know what it is yet. But in a buyer's market, or sorry, no, a, in a seller's market. Sorry, yeah, it's the opposite. So uh, yeah, in a seller's market, it's gonna be inflated. So I, I I wouldn't be shocked if they come out as like, hey, we we sold for eight hundred or a billion dollars or something like that for these companies. Um, All these companies just we'll able see. to just throw money around. Yep, we'll see. We'll see. We shall see. Please don't sell to Tencent. G4 and YouTube comedy brand Smosh has Smosh. partnered. There's not too much to really bring up about this. I did want to quickly bring this up because it's in our realm. G4 is um, like gaming news. I would have covered this if GameSpot kind of announced something like this. So I just wanted to quickly cover it in our regular news show. Alex, if you want to talk about G4, we can or if Smosh, but they basically announced that G4 has a partnership with Smosh. It wasn't really clear what it is. I don't know if there's like some sort of like equal branding opportunity they're going to have like on each other's shows or something, or if there's going to be like they do sketches on G4. Who knows? But they announced the partnership. Also, they announced that they will be on YouTube TV. So G4 oh. is going to be now a channel on YouTube TV that you can go watch if you have it. Apparently cool. it is apparently it is live right now. So you can go and watch it right now. Um uh I don't know if they I don't I don't know what they're playing on it. Is it just the YouTube content they make? I assume so like the little like the little like shows they do. So like is it just like on things? reruns? I have YouTube TV. I, I have YouTube too. TV at the house, so I have I to give it a try. Yeah, we'll try. We'll try, and we'll report back if we forget. Fuck, fuck I'm sorry. <laughs> it was. It wasn't meant to be, but yeah, I. I literally read this, and I was like, "Do I, uh, Alex? I want to tell you it was this close, and not even adding this to the show, just because like, cool." <laughs> you know like what do i i don't even know what to talk about this i used to watch smosh around my high yeah. school years they were hilarious i loved their content uh yeah. g4 i haven't watched since again i was like a middle school kid so i don't i can't even tell you what it's like everybody was like oh bring doing g4 right back and when they brought it back everybody was like oh you brought the you bought it you, you you're doing this though alex like, yeah i i can't i mean i feel like i have to agree with you here like look hey you know, you do UG4. I I, res- I respect the game, but I definitely do feel like they kind of came out and and they kind of came out like G4 is back now, and people are like, cool. Yeah. But like, are they? I I I'd be care- Are they successful? Is what I'm curious about. Because it's hard to judge if they are. We don't know how much money they're spending. We don't know how much money they make off average. You know, I don't know. I'm not watching yeah. them. But that's the that's the beauty of the internet, though. You don't need 100,000 people watching you every week. As long as you have a dedicated, like, 10,000 people that support you in, like, your ventures. Uh, like, whether it be, like, for for them, it has to be, like, ads and stuff. But, like, Patreons or, like, merch sales or something. So, they don't have to be huge to be successful. So, I don't know. They sh- we'll see. I, I will see. Because they already lost a... Uh, I mean, frankly, the whole reason I believe they're back in, in um, uh, Kevin Pereira, I believe. I believe he's leaving to the Netherlands. Yeah. We covered that a couple weeks ago. That's right. To, to That's live with right. his family, right. to, yeah. to kind of visit the world with his family. So they lost a, a essentially the guy who brought it back. So we'll see what's going on. I'll be curious to see what's uh, what's G4 like in a year or two. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm looking at their stuff, and I'm like, 
Not that many views. Kind of like you would think. You would think it would have had way more. Yeah, I mean, hey, look. I don't know. They're on YouTube TV now. That could that could mean a lot. That'll help them Maybe. out. I yeah. mean, if they if I don't know how the fuck you get paid for YouTube TV, but I mean, if they have a, a hard viewership, hey, it'll work. It's just strange that they brought G4 back in an era where podcasting has exploded, and that's the way mm-hmm. you ingest your media, right? I mean, do you like what? I haven't watched it, but like, is Attack of the Show still like a thing? That was kind of an old thing. I mean, that like that. It, it was kind of like cl- the 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 internet clip shows that no yeah like that turned it. into like Tosh Point no and yeah no they still do that I watched an episode of it and they still do that yeah so so I'm like I'm but curious like, if that's I, I I could just go do that myself well yeah that's true but also, yeah yeah I mean I'm trying to think um I'm trying to think Attack of the Show what were they what was the tech of the show? They were, they, they I mean, it was kind of like just a random online yeah, show I mean, that made I mean, jokes. That was like the and, best way you explain it. It's like, it's, it was like Tosh.0, but like gaming and multicultural stuff, you know? Yeah, they talk about pop culture a lot. They made jokes. They showed boobs a lot. I remember that. They were really big into boobs. I remember that. Cause, cause it was on G4. Every, everything was boobs almost. Um, yeah, I, We'll see. We'll see. I love Xavier Woods, and he's part of it. So mm. maybe he'll uh, he'll be the champion of brand. I hope so. Maybe. Producer for Final Fantasy 16, Naoki Yoshida, said at the end of the interview with the Japanese magazine, he gave a little bit of details that I feel like a bunch of Final Fantasy 16 fans, myself included, might find interesting. Quote, development of the latest title, Final Fantasy 16, is in its final stages. This game aims to integrate the story and the gaming experience into a single-player game. Unlo- unlike online, which portrays multiple players simultaneously, Final, Fa- C- Final Fantasy 16 focuses on the individual. Uh, how much else was really sad about this? Uh, because it was Final it, Fantasy in it, its final stages. Go sit in the corner, Alex. Go sit in the corner. Wait, no, it's this corner. <laughs> the, so... It wasn't really much because it was a magazine about something else, but they asked him at the very end, like, hey, you know, what, what, how's, how's it going? So they basically were like, hey, it's in the final stages. Uh, they, he did go on to be like, yeah, COVID sent him back like several months. He was like six-ish months because working from home is much harder. Apparently, um, Japan was hit a lot harder than America was. Yeah. Because Japan, specifically, for us, we most of us can go home and we have a computer or something. A lot of people in Japan have such small like apartment spaces that like they can't put a computer there. No space. So yeah. apparently that was a huge issue where like you couldn't really work from home because a lot of people just didn't have the the stuff to use it for. So a lot of their devs were just like, "Hey, I, how am I going to work? I, I don't have anything to work on." So apparently they were hit pretty hard. So so I wouldn't be shocked if this hit Final Fantasy 16 especially hard with all the other compounding things, of course, in COVID. Um. He also ex- uh, uh, previously stated that uh, there will be a major reveal in spring of this year. So spring, spring, uh, Alex, getting pretty close to ending. So uh, we should be seeing it soon, I guess. Unless, unless their their spring is longer than our spring, I don't know. That's a well, uh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Was, was he it? saying Japan spring at the time? Actually, it's a good point because that is different seasons, right? Right. Does Japan have different seasons? Let me see, let me see what let me see what the season is in Japan. Japan right now. spring season. When is this? March to May. It's the exact same. Oh, okay, okay. So it's the exact same. Yeah. So they, their spring So okay. yeah. So basically, this month is the last month, unless you want to suddenly call off like June as spring. And what are they gonna do? Another they could, random state? Are they gonna do a random state of play? I mean, PlayStation isn't unknown for announcing a state of play and releasing it two days later. So, wouldn't be shocked. Hmm. Would I? G- g- <laughs> they only do like I one feel or like two at this. Quarterly. Yeah, I agree. Have they had one this quarter? That's why I was like, I let me see what the last one was. I don't think they've had one this quarter. 
Last one they had was a look at, at Ghostwire Tokyo, right? That was the last one, right? It was a, there was a March 2022 state of play. Was that Ghostwire? Uh, give me a second. I think so. I'm pretty sure that was the one where they showed off Ghostwire. For uh, maybe? Oh no, because this is because no, this is the one where they revealed Exo Primal, that crazy dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was definitely yes, the Ghost Rider. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, there's a giant portal in the sky. And just dinosaurs falling from it. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, How so, are those yeah, dinosaurs not, alive? So, yeah, so we don't have one due to June. J- June should be is the, probably the next one. Okay, so yeah, I could definitely see that. Now I wouldn't be shocked if they had to push back the review for some reason. So, mm-hmm. achievers. Good news, bad news. Good news. They PlayStation announced how they're going to work their conversion to the new service. Bad news is I hope you haven't bought any more. So essentially they've paused redemptions of new uh subscribers basically to like PS Now yeah. and things like that. Yeah, you can't if you have some so, money you cannot stack. So yeah, it will not let you put the code in. Because they turned off the spigot, because I guess so many people were utilizing the pre-buy feature, which, Alex, I'm be honest with you, I can't imagine it was that at the amount, like, was it really that many people to make this big a deal about it? It was that many people to be like, we have to turn it off? Like, what, are you going to go into, go into debt? <laughs> like, place that you, you, you worried about money or something? I, th- it's just very strange. But yeah. they did release how the voucher system will work when the new service launches so when the new service launches they have a whole i'm not gonna read all this but they have a whole conversion chart with like if you have a 12 month ps plus voucher this is how much it will convert into premium this is how much it will convert into extra etc etc so if you have a voucher and you haven't used it yet or if you're just curious how your conversion is going to work just look it up. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and uh, read you the year one because most likely that's what people bought. So for both. So let's say you bought a PS Plus now or a PS Plus um, voucher. So either a plus or a now voucher for a year. So if you're, of course, a non-subscriber and if you are a. Oh, wow, that's weird. Never mind. So I can't say that. So for PS Plus and you bought a, a year. If, if you're a night if you're an, yeah if you're a non-subscriber in an essential you'll get it for the full year if you are an extra member it will be converted to 219 days if you're a premium member it will be converted to 183 days if you have a ps now voucher if you're a non-subscriber you will get 183 days of playstation plus premium so they automatically put you to premium if you're a non-subscriber if you use essential you'll get 365 days of essential if you're extra, you'll get 219 days of PlayStation Plus Extra. And if you're premium, you'll get 183 days of PlayStation Plus Premium. Very interesting that they automatically put you to a premium member if you're a non-subscriber and you use a PS Now voucher. That's weird, you, right? Well, be, no, because well, they, to be able to stream the things, you need the premium, so it automatically has to do it. Technically, you get it with extra, though. Do you, do you get the streaming with extra? I don't remember yes. anymore now. Okay. I think so. <laughs> now you're doubting. Like now I'm now, doubting myself. No, 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 no. I, hey, bro, I don't blame you for getting... If you even did, I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure the bonuses is you now, get a couple extra games to stream in premium, but you'll still get it in plus. No, my thing is... I had um, I had a I had just renewed let's say PlayStation Plus in, in March. Well, I have a fucking whatever, and then <laughs> I just recently got a PS Now one like last month. Okay. Will will it, will it add the two together? So like let's the twelve month voucher of Plus says one hundred eighty three days. The same thing with the twelve month voucher of PS Now. So both one hundred eighty three days. Will that stack? And I now I get three hundred and something days. That's a like, great question. Like it, that, that doesn't. I like- assume yes. Okay. I'm assuming this chart will now be utilized for all of your things. So let's say you have five years of PlayStation Plus. 
that will be converted into 183 days of PlayStation Plus Premium for every year. So 183 days times five is how I read it. Yeah, this is confusing. It, like if I, if so I, I don't blame 83 days of each one. Technically, it's 366. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, so <laughs> technically, it's a year's worth. You just get a year. Yeah, if you have both, you get a, a Alex, year's Alex, I want worth. you to. I want you to look me in the eyes right now, and because I, I, I know we're all thinking the same thing. Isn't this a PlayStation ass move? This is the most PlayStation thing I've ever seen in, in a long time. They made a conversion chart. You could have just like made it easy and be like, if you're a, a, a regular member. You'll get the full value. If you're a premium, it's in half or something. They had, they made a good, they went the, like, I'm just picturing a guy with a calculator, like, all right, so if, so if they're paying for this much money, okay, well, that has to equal this. Okay, all right. So that you equals have to call out Mark Cernio over there to fucking explain everything. <laughs> Mark, Mark, look, put down the PS5 Pro. I got a question. <laughs> like, Alex, this is a PlayStation ass move, right? This is coming out. Let, let's take a second and just be this, like, this is hilarious. <laughs> like, this is pretty funny. This is pretty funny. With with Xbox, they just give you the time. Yeah. They don't care. They just they don't they don't care. I'm not saying that's what PlayStation has to do or should do, but damn sure that's a way easier way of doing it instead of making a conversion chart and being like, all right, so if you imagine someone's mother, Alex, imagine we're eight. And like our dad or our, or our mom is like, all right, so you want this? Okay, um, I, well, I bought this accident. Okay, well, how does this work? All right, you'll get a, what? You'll get 183 days of plus premium when it launches in May. Okay. Like, ima- just imagine. We try to explain to him, we get all frustrated. Yep. Shout out to PlayStation for never changing. They're like Nintendo, man. Like you can never like all like they're gonna be they're they're gonna do their thing, and you're not gonna mm-hmm. change your mind. So there was actually a very interesting write up on Skull and Bones. I want to uh pull put everyone to Tom Henderson over on the expert sputter putter sorry X putter, and go check out his his read. He has a full detailed write up on like Skull and Bones and things like that. I'm just gonna take a quick snippet of it. He he he, did, he did tells a bunch of stuff. He he uh, goes on to his original reporting of the game. Basically, it grounds down to this: he has further confirmation that there will be no ground combat, and there will be no ship combat between crew members. So when you go and you invade a boat, you will not become a person and fight a person on that boat. You are a fucking ship, and that is it. You start the game in a small little ship. We, if you saw the uh, leaked extended trailer, Alex, did you watch that? I remember I sent it to you. I don't know if yes. you... Yeah, yeah, they, so, got, they got rid of it, but I, I, I saw it. Yeah, I did too. So I watched it in full. There was actually a leaked Skull and Bones trailer. Uh, and basically... You know what? Hey, I'll, I'll quickly go over it. So basically, it showed how the game's going to work. You start in a small boat, and you, you slowly upgrade, upgrade to a up. big boat. <laughs> That's the game. You well, can, you can, and it's weird because you can get out of the ship, but there's no combat. So you can. It seems like you can get out of the ship into like shopping. So I'm assuming what you do is you get out of the ship, and you're walking well, around a shopping square, right? That's what well, it looked like. Where he was like on a random island grabbing a chest, like in Sea of Thieves. He just digs a. He was digging up a chest, and he found one. And but that was it on the island. I remember that, and I was like, that's a pre-rendered cutscene. Like, I bet that is a thing you find, and, like, that is a cutscene that plays of your guy walking out. I got a chest, and he just walks like, out. You like, do- you, like, dock real quick, you hit a button, and it just does that cutscene for you? Yep. There was a point of making your character look different, because it says you, apparently you can customize your character and shit. <laughs> Alex, that's a great question, because they want people to probably think that you will not be just a ship. But they, but uh, it, they, th- Tom and Henson was clear, like, you are you're the ship man like they that is a fundamental to their game that they made they did not make it for where you know you're this, a guy you are you the, know what this guy sounds like to me he's one of those guys who was like they're like hey we don't we don't like that can you get can you put combat in that he would be like 
No, they don't play the fucking game. <laughs> like the head of the studio or something's just like, um, no. You, <laughs> it's, it reminds me of the, um, it was a long time ago, Alex. We, 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 we've covered this before when we were going over the Xbox One history. Mm hmm. Uh, when when they revealed the Xbox One and and they were mm -hmm. like yeah it has to be connected to the internet and the and the and what and someone <laughs> someone I forget who it was at the time I think it was like a head of studio or something somewhere and they were like hey so why do you have to be connected to the internet all the time and he basically says something on the lines of well we already have an offline Xbox One. It's called the Xbox 360, and it's like, damn, bro, I don't think you understand, and I feel like that's the same thing with Ubisoft, like, I get it, you, you went, you went quiet, you're trying to, like, make the game more appealing. This game already is a flop in my, in but, my head. But you're, you're, the way, when you started the game, when, I, I, out. I want you to I want you to picture the boardroom meeting like all right so so, high so, hopes for so this we're gonna, so so yeah we were really inspired by Assassin's Creed Black Flat ship combat so what we're going to do is and stick with me here stick with me stick with me guys it's just the ship though I know you really didn't like okay. walking around somebody, and being a character doing the, somebody somebody doing doing this. Yes, sir, turn the back turn the back yes and do I have a sword security get Get this man out of here! Like, can I not fight? Get him out of here! He's asking questions! Get him out! Like, frankly... There's a put in my face. Frankly... Look, this is a strange game. I get it. Ship combat is really fun. Sid Meier's Pirates kind of did a similar thing. Look, it's, back at this in, point, it's at this point, go play fucking uh, World of Tanks or World of Ships. They're, they're, they have the Warship game. Go play that if you want a fucking ship game. Like honestly, Alex, that's a strong point. Maybe they wanted something like that. Maybe they were inspired by World of Tanks, where it's like, "Hey, we'll be like historically accurate ships, and you'll have to like do something with the cannons or something." I don't know, but it's a lame idea for peep for this for when you made Assassin's Creed Four Black Fad, and everyone said how much they loved the ship combat. We this didn't mean not just you that. Soft. <laughs> we didn't mean just that though. Like, like it's weird that as a pirate you can't. We wanted all of that. But without the assassin stuff, we wanted to be a pirate, man. Uh, it's just like, so it's, strange. We wanted, we wanted Sea of Thieves, but like the way this looks, like you know more, yeah, you know more modern, different, like a different art style. It's just weird to me that like you can't be a pi like you can't. I you mean, can't literally, you can't pirate. pirate like you can't, you can't jump on a boat and steal it. You, have you to can't be a, a pirate in a pirate game. Yeah, I mean. It's strange, and I actually I agree with you. You started this before I did my dumb sketch board thing. Uh, you had high hopes. I did too. When this was revealed, Alex, you and me were very hot on it. I was very excited, yep. and then it slowly came out. After not hearing about it for f three years, four years, maybe, etc., it just got worse and worse, dude. Agreed. Maybe we'll see something out of this this year. Who knows? I'll... <laughs> No, never mind. I was gonna say I'll play this game if there's like a demo. <laughs> well, remember, Alex, if you play for PlayStation Plus, remember if you play PlayStation Plus Premium, every game will have a trial. Every game that's over a certain amount of money. Well, oh, I guess this one. Will. Yeah, this would definitely be more. Yeah. Xbox's well, Games with Gold was revealed for the month. Strap oh, the okay. fuck in. Nah, get the fuck out of here. May first through May thirty first, Yoku's Island Express. Yoku's May 16th time. to June 15th, The Inner World. May 1st, May 15th, these are your Xbox 360 games. Hydro Hurricane? Sorry, Hydro Thunder Hurricane. May 16th to May 31st, Viva Pinata Party Animals. These are your games with gold. we got in this game like for the for fifth May. time. Yeah, Alex, Viva Pinata is up there with like. Uh, Lego Batman, where, where like if you would have told me it's been Games with Gold twenty five times, I'd believe you. Just because I feel like I've read it twenty, like I feel like I've read Viva Pinata twenty different times on Games with Gold, as well as Lego Batman, like one two. Like, can they not find anything else to give us? Man, uh, they clearly just don't care. Man, they want go they want Game Pass. They want you to yeah, want they put Game all Pass. All that money on Game Pass now. Eh? They just want you to want Game Pass, man. 
There is a new color. Yay, yay. For Xbox controllers. I will sh quickly show it to you. Why did you disappear? I am invisible. You are invisible. There you go. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, that's why. Sorry, Achievers. I clicked the wrong thing. So I will quickly show okay. you. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Boop. Do that. Do this. There you go. Look at that deep. Look at that. Deep. So there's a new Xbox uh, One controller, and it was announced. And it is a pink controller. Look how pretty it is. For, the, for our ladies out there. And men. Or men. Yeah, and it's men. like a salmon pink. I I see a lot of gentlemen wearing that. I couldn't wear it because I'm just I, my, you know, my skin's I, I too fair. I would like fair. to do a, I would like to do a design labs of it of uh, that pink, but like the under part, make it like a nice purple with some purple Ooh. joists or like some sticks. Yeah. Okay. They're they're a lot bigger fans of making the um all of it a color. Yeah. This, this gen so far, I'm like, I I don't hate it, but first off clearly the under behind it's white that's not my my point is like 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 why is everything pink you know like sh yeah. shouldn't we have something breaking up the color like maybe underneath the thumbsticks like alex said maybe you get a little purple in there maybe the triggers we, 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 we need more of this we need more of this <sighs> there it is hey 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 always have it on hand always always have it on hand i yep. use this to play sweet by the way I use this. I was <gasps> using this to play Dark Souls on my PC. <laughs> oh, let me get it's, that out, out of here. It's harder uh, without the paddles, man. I've been using the paddles on my uh, Master Chief controller. Once you go paddle, you don't go back. Yeah. Like, how do you like? Remember when I said I was like it was hard for me to use paddles? Now I, I, I can't now I, now you're used to it. Now I will say with the Dual Sense, it was throwing me off because I was like, oh, I gotta right. hit buttons. I like, keep playing Neo and I keep trying to hit the back paddle. I was like, damn, I don't have paddles. Once they get that and going on the play, say, oof, I'm buying it. Cause, because it's just it's just how I play now. No, it's yeah, how I play. Sure. Oh, it's I mean, play. PS4 never made one other than that. The, there was that weird The back attachment you could buy. No, well, there was that third party one that kind of looked like an Elite controller. It was like an oh, off the brand scuff. controller. Kind of, yeah. No, it was. You're talking about Scuff, right? Scuff made a PlayStation yeah, controller, yeah, remember? That's right, that's right, yeah, that's right, yeah, with the paddles, yeah. It looked fucking terrible. Yeah. Achievers, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something else. Don't tell anybody. Don't tell me. Scuffs fucking suck. Oh, yeah, I guess there was that Astro one. The Astro C10? Oh, no. C40. Yeah. C40. Thank Astro you. Astro C40s. No, 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 no. You, strong point. I did forget about those. Scuffs, yeah, forget. scuffs made them, but no. The one I pictured in my head. Astro C40 was really C40s, nice in my yeah. opinion. I heard good things. The scuffs, on the other hand, unfortunately, I did not hear good things at all. Yeah, I don't know. See, so I wonder. Yeah, I wonder if they'll make a PS5 version, but maybe. Alex, mm. that's the news for the week. Now, Alex, I, I, show, uh, I forgot that Logitech bought them. Yes, I wanted to look that up. Yeah, I meant to tell you Logitech bought Astro. When is this? Because I can't imagine it could have been that long ago. Because I feel like it just doesn't happen. Oh, it looks, it looks like it was a long time ago, Alex. Was it really? July 2017. 20, 2017. Yeah. 2017. Wait. Yeah. Yeah, the 2017. So why are they so just not changing it. their boxes? So they owned it for that long. Maybe they didn't want that. Because some people do this where, like, they don't change anything about them because, uh. because like, it feels like a different option. Like I've heard, gotcha. I've heard brands do this where like they they'll buy a brand but they'll leave it, and they and, it. and they don't make it obvious that they own them because it's like oh this is a different option. Oh, the, the, you know, if if for some reason they don't like Logic or they heard bad things, they'll buy Astros, but it's the same fucking company, so doesn't matter. What Logitech confirmed to Polygon that it purchased Astro from its parent company. Do you want to know what Astro's parent company was? What is it? Skull Candy. Wow, really? You want to know how for how much? Ten dollars and a blowy. In this in in this space of video games, twenty seventeen. In, in this in this range of money that we've been talking about, it it it's, it could be ten dollars, eighty five million in in cash. <sighs> like it, when you talk when it, and with doing gaming podcasts, we just get numb. That is one of the things where I, it's just, that is numb. I'm like, 
fucking yeah. that's it <laughs> like like that like i'm just so numb to it now i'm like 85 million really that's it like what and that's crazy because that's a lot of money especially for There's, that is a little shocking though for astros because they had a lot of market value roger dick acquires um, blue microphones for 117 million yeah Yeti, i mean those like sounds like steals company? frankly like that is a huge brand now like yeah. yeti is I mean, like, yeah. if you can't afford a wave mic, you buy a Yeti, and there's just no other option. Like, yeah, like I didn't even know that. I didn't know that Logitech be... bought them too. No, me either. Me either. That tells you how much we we look at headsets. Like, we're not fucking the... yeah. reading about headsets. I promise you, I won't. What's up uh, with Logitech? I'm just making cash deals. This was a cash deal as well. Most deals are uh, a lot of deals are cash. Fucking, Sometimes yeah, they just do that big ass fucking suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> hey, when when. When you're prompted with immediacy, like cash is, you like it'll be yeah. in your account. Like, whew, it is very tempting. And I, I think, um, I think a lot of the deals have been cash, except for things like, um, I know Activision Blizzard, I believe, is a mix of shares and cash, but a lot of it is just cash. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of it is sharing cash because I think, um, the shareholders are basically like. They're getting paid, but like uh, they're getting shares of Microsoft alongside it, so like they're getting the company. Yeah, I don't know. It's very complicated. Yeah, Alex, that's the news for the week. Now, as you know, I like to end the show like I began it with one singular question. As we go into the weekend, what do you have queued up for the week? Now, of course, this could be a game, board game, TV show, movie, anything of the sorts. Maybe a good book audiobook you want to sit down with maybe a podcast mm. that you've yearning to be listening to that's just been debuted what do you have queued while you think of that i can of course remind the achievers of a couple things first off what's queued is for you as well you can head over to the comment sections and let us know what do you have queued up for the week of course and answer any of the questions that we've had throughout the show something that you have nagging at you you can of course head over to twitter.com tweet at us make fun of us talk shit we know you love doing it do it to us Patreon.com slash YouTubers if you want to support us financially. And remember, five-star reviews if you can. That helps the algorithms. And if you're on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe, share for Alex. What do you have queued? Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Um, I want to finish Neo. I'm hoping I can finish that so I can get to Neo 2 because I want to beat those. And then we'll see. Because so far, I mean, I, I was looking through a calendar list of just the games that are coming out and I literally don't have anything that I'm caring about until July or August. Alex, we've been saying it over and over again, and it just keeps coming true. We are in the leisure time. Find a good indie. Find a find a fun Break, name that you've Break missed. Yummy. It came out yesterday or today. There you go. Days. Find so it. Try that. Have a relax. Maybe not even play games. Maybe go watch a good movie or something. I know I'll be watching. Make 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 a make a make a nice make Gundam. A, well, make a, a nice Gundam. I bought my wife. Yeah. Um, I'll see if I can get a picture of it. I bought my wife yeah. the Lego Horizon Forbidden West um, tonic. Yeah. Oh, the tonic. Yeah. 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 I got half the body done so far on my Gundam, so I'm hoping I can finish it. I've I've been uh, I've had this half body done for the last couple months, and I forgot about it. <laughs> Now that I have, like, a desk again, I'm like, okay, I have space. I can do this now. Making sure this isn't showing anything. It's not. Okay, so there you go, Cheevers. Lego tall neck. It's That's pretty nice. cool. I'm excited for hey, her to build it. She'll probably be building it over the weekend. Are you going to put that next to the Regalia statue? Oh, you know. You yeah. know. You already uh, know. Yeah, yeah, we got with the Regalia edition. Yeah, that, that's mm -hmm. definitely going up there. She's very excited. I'm, I'm excited to, to help. I love Lego, so I'll be right there helping her. I went to a local GameStop to see if they had a uh, Elder Ring Collector's Edition because I wanted that Millennia, Millennia statue, man. No way, right? No. Yeah, Not no even way. Well, Like, all these games, too. Like, all these other stuff, like, there's getting, you know, like, like PVC statues. Like, you know, all these side statues. Like, Halo has the helmet. There's a Master Chief. But, like, Elden Ring? Not getting, uh, like, not getting any statues. Like, like I remember when Dark Souls 3 got the fucking Yorm big-ass yeah. fucking yeah. $400 statue. Yep. Dude. I walked into our local GameStop and they had one. And when it came out, that thing was fucking massive, dude. It was heavy. It was four hundred dollars. But like, very impressive. 
Yeah, like like well, like where are all these statues at, man? Now I give me Millennium, man. <laughs> nice, give me Millennium. Nice her. It's second second phase Millennium statue. Oh, is it really? I, no, no, no. I'm, I wish. Oh, oh, you want that? No, no, you the, want the, that? I was right, about to freak no, out. The, I was the, like, no way. No, the the collector's edition is the first phase where her sticking her yeah, sword out. Here's, like here's so yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's still cool, but like yeah, yeah no, second no, phase, definitely. but that second would, phase with awesome. the thing just the wings yes. stretched out. Oh yeah, that'd be sick. Yeah. Uh, finishing up Mood Knight, uh, checking out uh, Doctor Strange Multiverse. Probably head over to our local drive-in. Frankly, um, we already talked about our woes with our movie theaters around us. So probably check out Doctor mm-hmm. Strange. There's another movie I wanted to see. I'm blanking on it. Not important. But we're going to go watch <laughs> Doctor Strange, finish up Moon Knight. Those are like the two big things on like the little uh, immediacy thing. But it might be a nice weekend this week uh, to go do that aside from that i don't i don't really have other plans i talked about at the beginning of the show most week and one and two gonna slowly uh chip away at one now um yeah that's that's gonna be all for me you know destiny as always but there's no point bringing that up every time on the show alex mm-hmm. thank you so much for joining me this week is there anything you want to leave the distributors with going into the weekend um what is your what is your go to backlog game? Mm. Like, what is the next game everybody's going to right now? They're like, oh, I need to go back to that. Yeah, like, give us your like, give us your. Oh, I missed it. Let me go play that. Yeah, I want to. I want to know that too. For me, it's nobody saves the world. I really mm. very much want to play this game. It is very fun. I'm having. I only played a little bit, but the little bit I played, I was like, this is. I feel like gonna be really good. Basically, you can like change your form and stuff into certain things. You can be like a rat, or you can up, you know, you can be a soldier or a mage or something. And you yeah. can like change on the fly. It looks very fun. I can't, I can't wait to play more of it. Oh. In the UK, there's a video game store, and there's a life size statue of Millennia. Let me see if I can guess how much money it is. I I don't know if it's th- for sale, but it's 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 sitting it's sitting there with a with like with you know the 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 ribbon the red uh, museum ribbons around it. <laughs> but it, this thing is huge. I yeah, ju- it's I just, probably. I don't see. You're probably. Hitting I don't close. see a price. I don't see a price tag. So probably I don't like know if five maybe. six thousand dollars. Like probably easily. Yeah, it's it's just. I I don't. I'm wondering if it is for sale or if it's just there at the store just. Like you, if you, ever, they, I'm sure there are, there's a price attached to it. Like if it had at our mall sold. at the Think Geek, you know the big uh, Batman statue that they have. Yes, yeah. It's like it's kind of like that. Yeah, it could just be for sure. No, that's yeah. definitely one. That's definitely one. Achievers, thank you so much for listening to us. Mm. We we were joking like ha ha ha. Like last week's show was so long. Like that was the longest one. We're right back at it. Right back at yeah. the hour forty. Thank you so much for joining us for this extra special show. We had a good time with you. Let us know. Any sort of comments, or if you want to be on the show, or if you want to just simply write in for a question, patreon.com slash YouTubers for a DM, or just tweet at us. Thank you so much. Until the next time, go Chief. Go Chief.